All right, so in this video, I want to share uh, basically four or five things that show up in modern times that people mistakenly assume are spirituality or a spiritual practice, but in actuality have little to like fucking nothing to do with them. And the major aim of the video is to illustrate how most of our most of what shows up as spirituality or practice is largely impotent, empty, and superstitious. Not only that, but the majority of the time it's incredibly arrogant, ignorant, entitled, and disrespectful to the traditions from which these things came. And it's because, this happens because uh, basically of the conditioning we've been given by our world where we are extremely uh, selfish, in the sense that we treat everything like a commodity and we want instant gratification and we are so conditioned by marketing and by advertising that we don't even see it. So a lot of what I'm going to say is probably going to sound like complete gibberish because a lot of it is so invisible because it's so apparent because it's so all around us all the time. And often the hardest thing to really get in touch with is the most obvious, is the most apparent, is the most common. Because the thing is, if I'm going to uh, hopefully talk about very real dynamics which are tangible and accessible to each and every one of us in the present moment. And whenever I try to do that, the op usually what happens is no one knows what the fuck I'm talking about. But if I start using flowery large language and talking about, oh, just surrender to the divine flow and open your beingness to the grandeur that is your open-hearted divine nature birthright cosmic consciousness dna activated uh jesus's love fucking whatever people are like oh yeah like really get on board why did, why are people so able to get on board with that is specifically because it's fucking empty and i might be like oh wait what does that mean that's that's, that's how's it empty i love it it makes me feel good well it's empty exactly in the same way that marketing works, that advertising works, that government and political propaganda works. Uh, and it's through talismanic terms or slogans, which basically don't really mean anything, but because they don't really mean anything inherently because they're not clearly defined, everyone's able to project whatever they want into that thing. Uh, we can, our slogan could be change. We're going to change. And everyone's like, yeah, I, I, I want change. You know, I feel internally stagnant and the world's not as I believe it should be. So yeah, change is a great thing. The problem is that everyone's going to have a different idea as far as what change is. You might go to the CEO of Monsanto and his idea of change might be drastically different than yours. Uh, or you could find some psychopathic dictator who wants to invade and enslave a certain country. Their idea of change might be drastically different. Or we could find some uh, dreadlock hippie that's on the corner of the street, probably a few blocks from me, and ask him, oh, change, man. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm all about change. And then his idea is going to be drastically different. So in the same way, uh, basically, the, the more popular something is, the more agreeable and easy to digest and easy to swallow and tolerant that it is for people, usually the less uh, substantial that it is, the less the less uh, potent that it is. Because if it was so potent, it wouldn't be so uh, readily available. Because with something that's potent, with something that has power, comes a great deal of responsibility. And even in just basic ways, this is true in our everyday life. And for some reason, we always forget these basic assumptions because we assume spirituality or religion is somehow this otherworldly thing which is higher than and greater than and somewhere else and this otherworldly thing that somehow we can't scrutinize, we can't be critical of, we can't actually take it apart. When is That's extremely ironic because if you actually go into traditions past a generic surface level, things get insanely complicated super quickly. And the deeper you go, the more complicated that it gets and the more uh, scrutinizing you need to be. And actually, the more engaged you need to be, the more you need all of your faculties. Because there's this huge uh, denigrating quality to what people believe spirituality is. 
And that is largely because that I think the majority of the time people are operating under demonic sphere of consciousness, which they're presently unaware of, so they just keep precipitating and exaggerating that further and further out. And this demonic sphere of consciousness is basically a whole collection of things that operate within the psyche, which uh, denigrate a person's self-worth and cut them off from their own inner truth, which those two things might actually be spiritual, might actually be spirituality. So all of our efforts to go and get and attain and evolve and all these slogans are actually taking us further away from the actual thing that we actually want. But in reality, that's how our world legitimately functions. <laughs> uh, if you go to most stores and you actually look at a product, the majority of the time what the thing says it is is actually not what it is. And to use um, mainstream food for an example, mainstream food is not even really food most of the time. Fast food is not even really food. It's just a collection of chemicals, filler agents, and byproducts and waste products of the food industry that are mixed together with some flavoring and then served to people. And they're like, oh, this is the real thing. Uh, and another example is uh, maybe you've been, maybe you go to like generic mainstream grocery store and get tomatoes and the thing is hard as a rock, the inside it's kind of white, not really ripe, and you're like, oh, I know what a tomato is, this is a tomato. But then maybe you go to the farmer's market, middle of summer, you get this weird, oddly shaped thing that's really soft, and you're like, what the hell is this? And you're like, oh, that's a tomato, and you're like, huh? This is a tomato? What? Then you realize, oh, wait. And there's so many things in our world which are exactly that. They're just an amalgamation of chemicals and substitutes and fillers, uh, but it has the branding, it looks a certain way, it has the slogan, it triggers the right uh, condition mechanisms in the psyche, and then boom, we don't even, oh, we don't even connect the dots. And the same way that marketing and advertising works and government propagandas is largely the same way that religion and spirituality works. There is a commonality, there is a common thread, if we examine history for just a little bit, <laughs> uh, which we won't do in this video, but just look up the work of Edward Bernays, look up the works of people that have studied him and documented his work and influence over the world, and you can see some trends. Uh, and then also, this leads me to my next point, is that the majority of the time people are treating spirituality and these things as just another commodity another thing to add to their collection and they believe oh i i was a jew but now i'm a christian which actually that's a kind of a shitty example because that's sometimes more <laughs> uh cultural or racial but uh, it's okay i was a christian but now i'm a buddhist okay that's maybe a better example um and it's like to really believe that that's a thing and to really believe that that's actually possible requires so much assumption, so much arrogance, and so much ignorance that it's, it boggles the mind. You have to be so drastically removed from your experience to really believe that an ism and an ism really has anything to do with what you are. And at changing one for the other really represents any kind of change. And this is the thing is that on the planet, to the majority uh, perhaps of people on the you know in the mass consciousness that's like a real thing oh i'm a conservative but i'm a liberal but i'm this ism and that ism and that's where the majority of our energy goes and the way largely it works is that each day we only have so much time and we only have so much energy that's just basically our natural inherent limitation within being a human being so if you are conditioned to put the majority of your energy into uh, your work, you know, making money, that's a huge chunk of your day that's, that you have to invest a lot of energy in. And then at, on top of that, you have your family and you have, you know, your kids and your whole reproducing drive. And then you have on top of that, you know, your, your political uh, alliances, your political preferences, then you have your sports teams and the people that, you know, all the stuff that you follow and love and then you have the news and you basically have this whole thing stretched out and then on top of that, you perhaps eat a diet that's not even really food, that's not even really, it's more feed. <laughs> feed in the sense of like feed for 
uh, cattle or mass, uh, mass, um, I don't know, farm animals. So it's not even really food. So you put all these things together and then uh, you coat your entire body from every day, largely from head to toe, in a cocktail of chemicals that are largely byproducts of chemical warfare. <laughs> I mean, a lot of pharmaceutical drugs, a lot of pesticides and herbicides, a lot of products that people put on their bodies are legitimately just byproducts of chemical warfare that became illegal. And then the companies are like, well, shit, we got to put them somewhere. So you put all these, uh, so things like deodorants and hairsprays and shaving gels and uh, deodorants, antiperspirants, lotions, perfumes, makeups, colognes, dish deter uh, laundry detergent, so many things and all the tooth toothpaste and mouthwash. So you put all these things together and you have a huge cocktail which is really undermining the amount of energy and time that you have to give over. And then on top of that you're like, oh yeah, well this is your life now but you gotta think about your life like later. Or you're a lowly piece of shit who uh, is not very evolved and you have bad karma so here you need to work on all this stuff. And then you just layer that on top and then what are you? You're basically a peasant. You're basically a serf. You're basically loving your servitude. You're loving being a slave. And you're loving torturing yourself because you don't necessarily have to. You know, you can go to the store and buy different products. You can turn off the TV. You can choose to not believe in something. You can choose to use different products. You can choose to not have conversations. You can choose to go or not go places. You have all of these choices that are available to choose to stop hating yourself, to choose to stop lying to yourself and be more honest and be more authentic and uh, choose to tr actually not divest and invest all of your energy into parasitic, demonic, psychic forces. These choices are available to all of us all the time. Uh, but they're not easy to access if you're carrying these, these incredible burdens. Uh, so that was a bit of a, a bit of a tangent. <laughs> Getting back to the actual point of the video is that 99% uh, of the time what people are representing or how they're approaching spirituality or spiritual practices is just Christianity. It's just more salvational, hierarchical, creationist, surf, serfdom, servitude kind of uh, mindset where it's I'm just looking for another thing to be subservient to or another thing to give my energy and my power away to uh, because I'm lowly and I, I, don't, I don't know anything, I can't do anything and I'm subservient to this hierarchical system. And there probably is no coincidence that within Christianity, within uh, organizations like this, that they are often structured cosmologically and practically just like a feudal court system. I wonder if there's a coincidence. I wonder if historically there's a coincidence. I wonder if the people that were in feudalistic powers, uh, power positions had an influence over religious texts and religious creations and the ways in which things were disseminated and spread to people. You know, I wonder if history might suggest that, or actually give us loads of examples of that. Hmm. Uh, interesting. So uh, we take this basic religious programming of being subservient, being a serf, being of you know servitude, uh, and being used to being uh, at the bottom of this feudalistic hierarchical system. But somehow this system that we're at the bottom of is somehow going to save us from being at the bottom of it or something. Who knows? And then what happens is we're like, ah, oh, spirituality. So then we take our, our imagination and these astral psychic forces or these things that are basically being used in a demonic way against our, ourselves, against our actual organism. Uh, we take all of that and we don't examine it. We don't take it apart. We don't. Uh, invest any degree of scrutiny or criticism or judgmentality and instead we we operate from our existing arrogance, our existing ignorance, our existing sense of entitlement and our inherent and massive and tremendous and overt and gross aggressive disrespect 
and big fuck you to the actual traditions, the cultures, the people, the history, the time, the energy, the effort, the love, and the attention that all these people and places and things invested into a system. We just say, you know what? Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that shit. It's just about feeling good. It's just about being nice. It's just about visualizing your desires. It's just about healing your traumas. That's it. <laughs> All of these people from all of these cultures that wrote all of these books and invested their entire life waking to sleeping in these things, all, the, all they figured out was just feel good. Just be nice. That's it. <laughs> or all they figured out is methods to help me get what I want. Or methods to help me, you know, get rid of this thing that I don't think that I need. Really? Okay. But, but I get it. I'm, I, I know. I know in this context... I'm the arrogant asshole for questioning spirituality and religion. You can't do that. That's sacred. That's special. You can't do that. And this is like preschool. You know, we're all functioning at a preschool level. You can't say anything mean. You can't say anything critical. You can't challenge anything. You can't suggest anything. You can't suggest a larger context of reflection by which things can naturally begin to reveal themselves by their own nature. You can't do that because we're populist. And everyone is right. Everyone has a right. Everyone, you know, is just on their own path. They're just doing their own thing. We can't, we can't question it. So just be quiet. Just be nice. Just be positive. <laughs> and I'm just saying that because this is literally the shit people will say to me. And it's like, at which point did you misconstrue being spiritual with being a fucking boring, homogenized, pasteurized, self-murdered, impotent, uninspired, uncreative, disengaged, self-murdered, subhuman. Since when did spirituality or consciousness or evolution become that? Because that's largely what happens is uh, like, oh, I just, I'm already repressed. I need to be more repressed. It's just ridiculous. So I, I get that I'm arrogant uh, for questioning these things and pointing out that it's arrogant for people to assume that oh, this entire culture and this entire tradition is just something I can easily access and easily understand because I have the money or I have the time or I feel like it or I feel like I deserve it or because I just uh, don't feel like actually doing the work or putting in the time because anything in life that we want to be good at, that we want to have skill at, is a fucking pain in the ass. Everyone knows this. Well, I guess anyone that's ever tried to be good at anything knows that and people that sit around just criticizing other people or sit around feeling like shit or sit around murdering themselves and beating themselves up privately may not know that but if you have actually ever tried to develop skill at anything it's a fucking pain in the ass it takes a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of dedication a lot of commitment a lot of investment a lot of scrutiny a lot of judgment a lot of criticism a lot of all of these things and more and a good teacher and a good system and a good understanding of both of those things and good access to those things and the ability and the time and the freedom to actually invest those things in the thing. So many things have to go into it. Or we could just say, you know what? Stretching and breathing, it's all you gotta do. Being nice, it's all you gotta do. Uh, so what I'm trying to get around that is that basically people confuse spirituality with these four basic things. Number one, hedonism. Number two, uh, how do I fulfill my selfish desires? And number three, healing. And number four, uh, some kind of self-improvement. So hedonism is so ridiculously what uh, people confuse that. And hedonism is just basically like, oh, I need to feel good. It's pursuit of pleasure as kind of a path. And uh, obviously pleasure is fantastic. <laughs> obviously feeling good is so good. I think you'd have to be kind of a fucking idiot to argue counter that. However, taking those things too far doesn't really make any sense. And saying hedonism is spirituality doesn't make any fucking sense. And people think Tantra is like something that's pursuing pleasure or something that has something to do with sex. Not really. Uh, because again, we're just being arrogant and ignorant and stupid and disrespectful of the actual culture because we never actually took the time to investigate that actual cultural uh, paradigm and context and historical period and or a dozen other variables which contribute to the situation. We just say, oh, this validates what I already believe, so I'm going to take it and use it for my own ends 
patch, uh, a whole rebranding upgrade to what I already think, feel, and believe, and I'm good to go. The end. Now I'm this higher above everyone else. Uh, and for some reason, a huge common thing is like, uh, I saw this a lot actually in the last week of these like, you know, transformational spiritual festivals and the pictures they're putting online advertising it is like hundreds of people just naked in a field. And I'm like, I mean, that's cool. Like, if you want to get naked, if you want to get naked with your friends, you want to do any of those things, that's fucking fantastic. I'm, I'm naked half the day, <laughs> sleeping and uh, showering and doing a lot of other things. That's about half the day. I'm not, I'm not wearing clothes, so I'm all about it. Now, I don't think that has a fucking anything to do with me being spiritual or somehow shattering paradigms or doing anything. Uh, although I could tell myself that, or I can just say, well, it's just, this is just what I do. It's comfortable. It's easy, whatever. But anyways, uh, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to name festivals, but it's a huge fucking thing, uh, which is great, but has nothing to do with it. Uh, and then the whole thing about stretching and breathing and like, that's, that's quote yoga. It's nothing to do with it really, actually. I mean, endorphins are great. Feeling good is great. Feeling relaxed is great. Uh, loving people is great. Sure. Fantastic. Not a goddamn thing to do with actual spirituality. Uh, number two, uh, methodology to fulfill my selfish desires. And largely what people are asking is, how can I put a gun to God's head? How can I get what the fuck I want? But how can I not be up front with what I want? So I need to do this whole other charade and song and dance and a subversive agenda to appear other than what I actually am, which is selfish and self-absorbed, incredibly narcissistic ignorant, entitled, and arrogant. Or we could just admit that's our natural condition and largely uh, that's kind of what we've been conditioned to. We can investigate that, take that back, see into our desire, see what desire actually is, see what the nature of self actually is, see how fulfilling things actually are, see the real nature of things as they exist in this dimension of impermanence and transience and constant change. We could do all those things or we could just say, you know, I just need a vision board, I just need to visualize, I just need to get whatever the fuck I want. And the good news is, maybe sometimes we get what we want, but maybe we don't. But also, how do we really know? Because if we are, again, labeling ourselves as broken, labeling ourselves as lesser than, then how can we really trust what is coming out of that? Seems odd. Uh, the third thing is, okay, well, I need to get into spirituality so I can get healed. Well, I think that's called medicine. Uh, I don't know if that's actually like uh, spiritual, but then what happens is uh, there's so much conditioning and our Western paradigm is so deeply impoverished and almost archaic in the way that it views the human body that again, what people do is take that just archaic, ridiculous subhuman view of life in the world layer on some energy medicine and a few chakras and crystals and meridian theory and communist Chinese medicine, a few other things and think, oh, okay, now this is like, it's medicine, but it's like spiritual because it talks about like the mind or talks about like emotions or talks about like the spirit. When again, you're just re-emphasizing division, separation, hierarchy and all the things that you're supposedly trying to heal and be uh, an alternative to, but you're actually just re-emphasizing them at every single step and you're pulling yourself in multiple directions at once, thus lacking potency, thus lacking foundation, thus lacking any real substance and or power. Interesting. But again, healing's fantastic. Love it. There's nothing wrong with it, obviously. Uh, and the fourth thing is, uh, oh, well, spirituality is like my self-improvement thing. You know, I'm just really working on being positive, really working on being nice, really working on being kind, or really working on this, really working on that. <gasps> really working on another hamster wheel because one wasn't enough i need a dozen a dozen ladders are better than a single ladder is basically what we're saying here and it's also the whole idea that oh well you know being just be a good person just be nice that's you know that's spirituality that's what the dalai lama is telling us and it's like well that's actually more like morality or ethics uh, and if you need someone to point out to you that it's a good idea to be kind uh, what <laughs> Huh? <laughs> like, really? So, so, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of years, or hundreds or thousands of years, I should say, Tibetan Buddhism has been 
kicking and alive and evolving and growing, moving forward. The whole summarization of that is be nice. Just be kind. Huh? And that's, that's really like, that's it. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, yeah. That's a lot of stuff. Hopefully some of it made sense. Probably not. But most of it is just in sort of response to just the just idiocy and just ridiculous, idealistic, naive kind of shit that just pervades our culture right now. And it's only just getting more and more and more and more and more and more. Uh, uh, yeah. So... There's also an article that I wrote on the same <laughs> subject, uh, which I'll link below, and you can perhaps enjoy that as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if it's made you mad, I don't care. If you agree with me, I don't care, really. If you disagree with me, I don't care, really, uh, because I'm, I'm not interested in right or wrong, good or bad, or morality, or you hurt my feelings. You challenged me, that hurt. I really do not care. Uh, it makes no difference to me. <laughs> like, I didn't make this video for those reasons. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments or things you want to expand upon further, that is interesting, then please post those below. Otherwise, open your heart center and uh, surrender to the divinity which is each in, inside each and every one of us if we could only just be in the present moment.